again to all you kids watching. We are now to question 25 of the New City Catechism. Oh, and I need to change the number here. Sorry about that. <laughs> New City Catechism number 25. And uh, the question is, does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? Does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? The answer, yes. Because Christ's death on the cross fully paid the penalty for our sin, God will remember our sins no more. It's a long answer, but that is a great truth to memorize. So the answer again, yes, because Christ's death on the cross fully paid the penalty for our sin, God will remember our sins no more. And if you'd like to pause and practice that with the app or with the song, uh, it'd be a great time to do so now. Many of you probably don't know that I have glasses. I wear these glasses to read. I uh, usually don't wear them around during uh, any other time, but just when I'm reading. Got these, uh, these new glasses just a few weeks ago, and uh, the place where I got them gave me this nice little case to carry them in and this little cloth to wipe them off. And I'm very glad that I have this cloth because... Uh, they get fogged up a lot when I'm reading, or they just get little debris on them from here or there. And I find myself several times a day doing this, wiping them off to make sure they're clean, because sometimes I'll be reading a book, and I'll start looking at it, and it looks a little blurry, and there's something in the way, and I can't quite see it clearly. So I have to take them off and clean them, uh, and keep cleaning, cleaning them throughout the day. Now, if... If somebody could give me some kind of cleaner that would guarantee my glasses would never have to be cleaned again, I think that'd be a great deal. And I think I would pay a little bit of money for that because that would be a wonderful thing to have. But I don't think there any, is any such thing out there. I think those of us who have glasses will probably have to clean them uh, regularly for the rest of our lives as long as we, we have them. So um, that's a, a little illustration of how it was to offer sacrifices in the Old Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, when Moses uh, gave the law to the people of Israel, God gave to Israel all kinds of rules regarding different sacrifices they needed to offer to him. And these sacrifices were offered day after day and month after month and year after year. And they had to keep doing it over and over and over again. And it's like cleaning off my glasses. It has to keep happening over and over and over again. Why? because the people kept sinning. And as they kept sinning, they kept having need for these sacrifices to cleanse their sin and wipe away their sin. And the sacrifices could only do that temporarily. The sacrifices kept the holy place clean, but it really did so more like it was managing its cleanliness over time. And it had to be cleaned over and over and over and over again by their sacrifices. But what's different about the New Testament when Jesus came and died on the cross for us as a sacrifice for our sins is that His sacrifice was once and for all. He died one time and He was raised one time and there's no more sacrifice for sin that has to be made ever, ever again. That's the wonderful good news of the gospel. And it's because Jesus is the final sacrifice that God will remember our sins no more if we are in Christ. And that is wonderful news. God will wipe away our sins and will not hold them against us ever if we are in Christ. So listen to what the author of the letter to the Hebrews says. This is a book in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 11. He says, and every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. So all these other priests of the law given through Moses, they had to keep offering their sacrifices all the time. Christ gave a sacrifice of himself one time, and then he sat down at the right hand of God, showing his work was completed. And he did so, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us, for after saying, 
This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, this is where the author is quoting from the book of Jeremiah, from Jeremiah chapter 31. This is what it says. I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. That's because of Jesus, one sacrifice for all time. And the author of Hebrews says, finally, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is no longer any offering for sin. So one more good, wonderful, great thing I want to tell you about Jesus. Not only is he fully God, not only is he fully man, not only did he die in our place, but he did it one time, and his one death was fully sufficient to pay all that we owed to God. So that with his one death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead one time, we could be made fully clean if we only trust in him to forgive us. If we are in Christ, God will remember our sins no more. So trust in Christ to forgive you and to save you from your sins. One more time, here's our question. Does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? Here's the answer. Yes, because Christ's death on the cross fully paid the penalty for our sin, God will remember our sins no more. We're going to sing two verses of a song, and I'll just sing, uh, I'll sing one and then repeat it, and then the next one and repeat it. And this song is called In Christ Alone. Uh, this is one we sing at church as well. And uh, we're going to sing the second verse and the third verse because they speak to us about Jesus' death for us and his resurrection for us. So listen to the second verse. In Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live Sing that with me In Christ alone took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. Here's the third verse. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Sing that with me. There in the ground, there in the ground, his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. What a great song. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you will think more.
and talk more with your parents about Jesus' one sacrifice for our sins so that God remembers our sins no more. I'll see you next time.